As much as I'm excited about what God's doing here, I'm excited about today. Because everything I preach, everything I believe is God wants to do something today. Not one day, not in heaven. That'll all take care of itself. But he wants to speak to you right now. Will you stand with me? Y'all ready? Tell somebody, say, I'm ready. ready. Here's the thing. We're in this surrender series, a series to surrender. I didn't make it flashy, didn't make it creative because I want it to be straight. It is simple. Surrender is a simple concept, It is, but it is not easy, but it will change your life if you will put it to work. It will work if you work it. Tell somebody one more time, say, I'm ready. ready. Surrender is not, surrender is not something that you decide to do in a a defining moment. Uh, surrender is uh, who you are in every moment. Amen. Surrender is not a um, surrender is not a superpower. It is a lifestyle. It is a posture. It is uh, it becomes you. It becomes you. You don't just surrender the main thing. You don't just surrender the thing you need from God. You don't just surrender. Uh, you don't just surrender one thing. So, tell your neighbor, say everything. That is surrender everything, every moment. And if you're not, if you're, if you're not, if you're missing opportunities to surrender, by the way, that's my title today, missing opportunities. You are missing him. You are missing the work he wants to do in your life, in every area of your life. And a lot of you are surrendered in a lot of areas, but you're missing opportunities in, in some areas. Tell somebody, say, I'm missing it. I'm missing it. And I just want to, I want to share, I just want to spit, like I'm going to be preaching fast today, but I hope you'll listen. Will you lift your hands right now? Um, uh, This is worship. We think worship sets us up for the message, but everything we do should be worship. Not just on Sunday, every single day. We should consider his love and how much he loves us. So Lord, right now, just speak through me, speak to me, uh, 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 because I need it too. I got some stuff I need to surrender. Every one of us do, and if we don't think we do or pretend not to, we're lying to ourselves. Say this with me, Catalyst. Say, help me see see and seize seize. the opportunities I'm missing for you to work in my life. Online, I hope you're with me because you're a part of this too. In Jesus' name, amen. As you're seated, tell three people, I got some stuff to surrender. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I'm just going to throw out I'm just going to throw out opportunities that you're missing every, that we're missing every single day to see God work in our life. I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm going to throw it out there. I'm going to start broad and I'm going to break it down every bit of the way and I'll probably end broad too. Who knows? We'll see where it goes. Because the way you're working it, the things that you think are working but you're missing it, there's some areas of your life that you think you're surrendered and you even, you even got some surface level success but you are not surrendered. And there are some opportunities when you're missing opportunities to surrender to him, you are missing him and what he wants to do in your life. I have seen it in so many areas of my own life, and I just want to learn every season. You ready? Let's start broad every day. Every day. Let's just start. You're like, that's big. Yep. Say every day. Jesus said this. Then he said to the crowd, uh, if you want, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, a.k.a. say Surrender. I love the Bible lingo. They say a lot of different words that mean the same principle because they're trying to hit all these different angles that we try to hide from what God wants to do. Um, You must give up your own way and take up your cross. Say that with me. Say every day. Not, not when, not Sundays, not when stuff goes sideways, not when you don't like it, what they're doing, what your boss says every day. And follow me. Paul said it this way. He confirmed Jesus' teaching when he said, I die daily. Yeah. Die means surrender. Amen, bro. Surrender. Die to your ego. Die to your insecurities. Die to your anxiety. Paul said, I am dying to myself daily. Because even that man that didn't just change the world, he literally uh, is probably the biggest influence on Western thought. Come on, man. He wasn't perfect. And he said, I'm still, he said, I haven't. He says in Philippians, hey, I haven't achieved that. But he said, I die daily. I love the terminology die. Die to yourself. I love that because think about dead people. Think about dead people. The point is to die to your plans, to die to your ways. You get wounded in your life and you lose years living in bitterness, callous. And and one day you look at how you hurt your family. You look at how you push people away. You look at the things you missed out on. and, And a lot of people are unlucky enough. They're like 70, 80, 90 and seeing the years that they ruined because they refuse to die to themselves. 
And, and Paul gives us an, this beautiful analogy. He says, die. Die. Think about dead people. Dead people uh, are not easily offended. They're not, uh, they're, not, uh, they're not scared. They're not scared. They, they do not manipulate and cling to control in every relationship and situation. They do not try to one-up everybody. They do, not, they do not try to one-up everybody. They're not entitled. Dead people aren't entitled. Dead people, uh, dead people aren't, don't embellish and dramatize everything. Uh, dead people don't remind you of all they did for you all the time because they want to push their way on you. That's not what dead people do. Dead people are dead. And Paul said that is the way that you surrender every day of your life, every win, every loss, every disappointment, your good mood, your bad mood. I know I got some moody people in the place because you reflect your leadership and I are one. Everything, say every day, every day. Every day. Every day. Connor, write a song on that one, bro. Every day. Every day. For the rest of this message, when I point to you, because I can already tell it's a sleepy crowd, so we're going to wake you up. I'm going to point to you. You're going to say, 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 I'm missing opportunities. Actually, no, say, I'm. Don't look at your neighbor. I'm missing opportunities. Wake it up. I'm missing opportunities. You're missing opportunities. Every single day. You think this, you're, you're waiting for this big moment to surrender to God and God is waiting for you to surrender every moment and he will change your life and he will show you a reference that is so much bigger than the perspective and the patterns you've been living in. But first you gotta begin to surrender every day, every moment. And you're missing him because of it. And you're missing him because of it. Now let's break it down a little bit. Let's bring it down a little bit. When you're stressed, anxiety, all these things. I love the Bible. These guys died brutal deaths writing this stuff. They were egocentric. It was an archaic time. But these jokers, as best they knew how, they practiced these things. Peter says, humble yourselves, a.k.a. surrender. Therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety. Say all. all. Get extra. I'm giving you permission to be extra so you aren't extra this afternoon. Say all. All. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. One of the things about anxiety is anxiety, the chemical imbalance and all that stuff. Here's how it happens. At some point in your life, you had a traumatic moment. That traumatic moments don't just happen in war. Some people get traumatized by their dog dying. I'm not even going to crack jokes today because y'all heard them enough. I don't know. But, but you love pets more than people. And I'm going to tell you, some days I do too. And that's saying a lot. Um, I digress so bad. What happens is you have a traumatizing moment in your life and, and, and you have anxiety because whether it was a mis something that was done to you, something you did, something you regret, something that was really hard, a tragedy. Uh, I, I could go on. You know, you know what it's like to hurt, right? We all hurt the same. And so what happens is you get these, you can be in a, because when you have anxiety in your life, you can be in a room, you can have a beautiful family, you can have a beautiful life, you can have a beautiful, a wonderful job. And you can, anything can trigger whatever hits that spot of what happened to you 10 days ago, 10 years ago, when you were a child, before your memory even starts. And in that moment, your anxiety takes over and you feel unsafe. And you're in a moment like I've seen so many men and women that can't even enjoy their families because they let anxiety rule them because of what happened 30 years ago and they're fine in this moment and God's trying to bless them. And what happens is, is when we let anxiety control us, I have seen, I bet Tim Singleton can attest to this, most of the people that shoplifted in Walmart, they never really were shopping to because their kids were hungry, they were hungry, or, or they weren't shopping for anything they needed. Or honestly, most of them, I would say, weren't shopping, trying to steal and, 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 and sell it off for triple the price. Most of the time, in, in my experience at the door, mamas would, and daddies and people that felt out of control of their marriage and their job. They felt out of control of their situation and their, and their, and their kids. They, they felt so out of control. And what we do is we try to cling to control. That's what anxiety does when you shut down in a room. You just don't want to look at anybody or deal with anything. And what happens is that's just as bad as flipping out and overcompensating in a room. Because whether you push people away or never really get to enjoy people, you're still getting robbed. Come on now, man. Come on. 
And so what happens is we people want to just cling for control. So I have seen people that don't play tennis. They play tennis about as much as me, still tennis balls. Because they feel so out of control, they want to control something. I've seen single mothers and, and dads too over the years at Walmart at that door still socks that don't fit them babies and don't fit them either. Because in life, and we don't do that. Hey, the people are like, I don't shop left. What, you've been married three times. Come on, man. Because you sabotage that relationship because you fight so hard for control because of whatever happened to you. You will not cast your anxiety on him. You cast it on the people who love you. You project it. You've had 17 jobs and, and you burn bridges. You're pissed off or you just let people run over you and nobody promotes you because that's not strong leadership when you're timid. I don't know what it is, but what happens is we try to control something. And before you know it, you get arrested for shoplifting. You get, you're, on your second, you're on your second relationship in the same year. And before you know it, you're, in, you're more out of control than you were because you keep trying to grasp. You want to feel worthy. You want to feel in control. And Peter says, humble yourself under his mighty hand and he will lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him. Surrender it. Surrender it. It, I know that sounds simple, and it, it, it really isn't. It's, it is that simple. It's just not easy, and it doesn't happen overnight. It does not happen overnight. You walk into a room. You walk into a room, and uh, you just freak out because you don't feel worthy to be in the room. You don't feel worthy to be in the board meeting. You, you feel too dumb to contribute to whatever they're meeting about. Uh, I mean, I mean, you... Um, you don't think you can handle the job or you don't think you'll get the job and then you get the job and you don't think you can handle it. So you mess around and sabotage something that God gave you because you are the person for the job. You are the parent of your child. Don't you waste those years. God made you their mama and daddy. Come on. And what happens is we let anxiety control us and control us and control us and control us. And before we know it, we are so far out of control because we keep trying to cling to it instead of surrender our anxiety to him. Can't even talk to a girls or guys, whatever. You're like, I was that guy, man. I was that guy. You know, people always say, well, you just never got a girl interested till you got Angie. Well, the thing is, I never talked to anybody because you put a female around me. I was like in the movies. You get me on the stage in a room, I can work it. But you get a female one-on-one, I don't eat, I don't talk. I mean, it's bad. Anxiety, man. But you know the difference in my anxiety now versus one, two, ten, Pick your feature. I still got it. Come on, man. You, don't go through, you don't go through what I've been through and not have anxiety. That's right. boy. I still got that crippling anxiety. I got him. I still get this. I still get here. But here's the difference in my life now. I don't, I don't live here anymore. I live here. So when this happens, I know it's not going to last forever. And I also have learned my limitations because I don't live here. So this is just where I live. I live here. And let me, and that doesn't just happen. Hey, I, honestly, meds that I've taken over the years don't really cause that. What caused it, what happened over what's happened in my life and continues to happen because I ain't there yet is I've learned that I have to surrender what I can't control. Come on, Melvin. Day by day, I have to surrender it. There are some things where you can ask anybody. When I reckon, when it makes sense, I can't control this, I'm done with it. Whether it's a relationship, whether it's a, a, an unpopular decision, whether it's your opinion of me, I have to walk away from that because I will let your opinion define my opinion and I will live in that insecurity. I have had to learn to let go. If I fight for control, I'm going to lose. If I surrender control, God is going to work in my life and I'm going to see day by day, year by year, his work. And I will never look back because you Humble yourself under his mighty hand. In due time, he'll exalt you. It's the way it works. You work, it works if you work it, but you got to work it till somebody. And you're missing him because of it. That's where peace is found, y'all. That's where healing is found. That's where wholeness is found in your life. That's where what your mom and daddy told you 30 years ago that you couldn't, couldn't do doesn't control you at 70 years old. That's where it's found. I got to move faster than this. Say uh, uh, short, when you're short. Deficits, not enough money in the bank. Don't have high enough test scores. I don't know what you don't got. I just know my shortages. I don't know yours, but we all got them, Jesus said. And don't be concerned about what to eat and what to drink. These jokers had to work for their food a lot harder than we do. Burger King went down the road for them. You couldn't have it your way. You had to work the fields. Don't worry about such things, he's, Jesus said. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world and church people too. Oh, boy, tell it like it is. 
But your father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and he will give you everything you need. So don't be afraid. I love this little flock. That's what you are. You're his little flock. Your family is his little flock. This church family is his little flock. You are his child for it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Give you the kingdom. He told Peter, he said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. That was a promise to all of us. All of us. Quit worrying about it, man. A faith story that doesn't require faith is not a faith story. You are going to have shortages in your life. You're going to have areas where you're not enough because that's the point of this thing. How in the world can you trust your creator and grow closer to him when you can always do it on your own? Because the point is you can't. You are going to have deficits. You are going to have disabilities. You are going to have diagnoses if you live long enough. You are going to have them. And Jesus says, don't worry about them. Surrender them. Surrender them. Moses, Moses, God literally told Moses, I want you to lead two to three million Israelites across. The, I want you to take them out of Egypt. I want you to lead them out of slavery. I want you to lead them to the promised land. We're talking two to three million Jews. And Moses says, I, uh, he probably was really stuttering then. I, 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 stutter. Probably took him five minutes to say stutter. You know, what, you know what, the first time God ever uses the term Yahweh in the Old Testament, he says, I am Yahweh. I'm whatever you don't have. I am. I got what you don't, I, I got what you need. I make callings not based on your deficits, but based on my power. But you have to surrender the shortages in your life. Jeremiah, he calls the prophet Jeremiah, he calls him real young. And Jeremiah says, oh, I'm too young. God reminds Jeremiah, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb and I set you apart as a prophet of this nation, big boy. You need to remember who I am, not what you don't have. You need to surrender the shortages in your life. You need to surrender the shortages in your life. He told Paul, Paul says, hey, Paul says, God, there's something. We don't even know what it is. It was apparently so bad that even Paul's crazy tail didn't go transparent on him. He said, God, it is a, tor- it is a demon sent to torment me. He said, take it away, take it away three different times. This wasn't no three different five-minute prayers. It was probably a begging, a God, I need this. And God says, no, my grace is sufficient. My power is made perfect in weakness. Ben Bonner, my power is made perfect in your Tourette's and your, all these other things that you've had, these shortages. Your, his power is made perfect in, the, in your divorces that you've been through. If you will begin to surrender what you don't have and how set back you are. His power is made perfect in your criminal record. His power is made perfect. I don't care what you don't have. I don't care what you need from God. I, how traumatized you are. How you're thinking about ending your life today because you bought into a lie that you don't have enough to live for. That the best is behind you. I'm telling you you he raised the father raised Jesus to life because that's our story but you have to surrender what you don't have God I don't have it but I'm gonna move forward anyway I don't know what it's gonna look like or what it can look like to get out of debt but I'm gonna move forward anyway I'm gonna try to spend my money better next week than I did this week you have to surrender your shortages you have to surrender them Bible says we're overcomers by the blood of the lamb And the word, the power of our testimony, the power of it. And there is no faith story when there's no faith required. And you have to surrender it. And there's some opportunities you're missing to surrender. Paul told the most dysfunctional church in the New Testament, Corinth, they were really messed up. We only see two letters. He wrote like four for sure. He says, you have everything you need as you eagerly wait the return of the Lord. His church gave him headaches, probably hernias too. And he says, you have everything you need. It's just time for you to surrender in what you don't have. Y'all got to do better now. There were times we were running half this many people were louder than y'all. Can y'all actually act like you believe it? And you're missing him because of it. You're missing him because of it. Let's move on. The impossible. It's kind of related, but I told you I'm going to break it down. I'm going to break it down. The impossible, man. There's some things that you think the best is behind you. You don't think it can ever be this way because you're looking in your natural eyes. Bible says what is seen is temporary. What is unseen is eternal. In other words, the impossible that God wants to do in your life, you ain't going to see it right now. Jesus said, Jesus replied, what is impossible with man is possible with God. If it's impossible, I'm going to tell y'all, I get concerned now. I know I stress out. You can tell the staff sometimes like, hey, simmer down. But I honestly get concerned now when there's not situations of great challenge 
when it makes sense. I get concerned when everything's running a little bit too smooth. I like somebody amen in that right there. Some people want amen. They're like, ooh, I wish you'd move on to the faith part. No, the faith part is when you need to have faith that, God, I can't move this mountain. I need to trust it to you. What is impossible with me? The marriage that you don't think will ever be redeemed, that y'all, were, y'all burnt the bridge 10 years ago, you just roommates now. I don't know what it looks like, but the impossible, you have to surrender it. Quit living in it. Quit posting on social media about it. My God, stop ooh, being kids. Quit trying to burn your ex to the ground. Surrender the impossibility. Whether you, don't, whether you reconcile with your ex or whether you move on, you can at least have a civil relationship and be respectful. Jesus was on the cross and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do because he understood that I got to surrender it all to, to my Father. He was our example, our standard. Tell somebody, say you're missing opportunities. This is crazy. I love the story of David and Goliath. I hadn't preached on it in a long time, but I did back in the day. And uh, I love the part where um, he, Goli- uh, David kills Goliath with a sling and a stone. But he goes up to Goliath and he chops his head off with Goliath's sword. With, his sword. with Goliath's sword. So he, he cut Goliath's head off with the exact sword that Goliath planned to end David on, with. Man. That is not just there to be there. That's not just a detail that they felt like they had to leave in there. Because that is the gospel. He would do the same for you. Whatever was intended to harm you. Joseph said it in Genesis 50. My brother is what you intended to harm me. I'm not bitter at you. Now that daddy's dead, I ain't going to get even with you. Because what you meant to harm me, God meant for the, for the good and the salvation of many. Goliath's sword, whatever that is in your life, he will use what could have made you a statistic. He, would use, he will use what, you, what your parents did to you, what your ex-employee did to you, what your wife or husband cheating on you did to you. He will use the very thing that was intended to destroy the will and work of God in your life. He will use it to show you his glory and to show the world his glory through you. But you have got to surrender. You're like being, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know. I, I don't have to because whatever's bigger than you is not bigger than him. If we believe what we say we do, and if you're here, you're at least open to believing it, or either your grandmama pressured you to be here, and I hope you'll believe it one day. But I'm going to tell you, whatever you think is too big for you, whatever is impossible, that is not a bad place to be. Because there's some mountains that you were never intended to move, and you're going to waste your entire life trying to push them. You're going to waste your entire life trying to push them. Do not give up when God shakes your life up. Yes, come on now. Because God will shake your life up. Yes, he, will. he will shake your yes, life up to break you out of boxes that you put yourself in. Ooh, he will shake your life up to bust you out of barriers that you put around yourself. And that's what he will do. That's who he is. But you got to surrender it. Oh, wow. I got some. I'm missing opportunity. You're missing him. Yeah, yeah, Heather. Heather's like, man, you got, you got me too much to remember now. Come on now. How about just say amen? Connor's song was good. Catalyst original was good. How about this? Amen. There it goes. How about this? Amen. Okay, now, is that good enough for you? Okay, no more excuses. Amen. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's, let's move on, hopefully. We need to move on. I'm wasting time. Risk. Risk. You got to surrender your risk. You got to take risk. You got to surrender the change in your life. A lot of people, I think that one of the biggest problems with people that don't have much faith and can't grow in their faith is they don't take risk and they will not, they will not change. They will not change. And I thought this is beautiful story in the book of Acts. So we like, uh, we like the apostle Paul, right? Everybody loves reading about Paul. And like I said, I do. Paul's probably my favorite. Most, he's the most intriguing person uh, in the Bible for me. I took a lot of grad school classes because I still love to read his letters. Before he was the apostle Paul, he was Saul. He imprisoned Christians. He didn't just kill Stephen. He killed probably many and he imprisoned. He would go from town to town. If you were a Christian, he'd arrest you. And in Acts chapter 9, God does a work in his life. Nobody knows but the people with him at this point, right? He gets knocked off his donkey and going to Damascus. He gets blinded. Jesus himself, we know Jesus was the one to do it, even though he had already ascended. Jesus says, why are you persecuting me, Saul? Me, that was Jesus talking. 
So he has to go hide out in Damascus because the man can't see. The man got knocked off his donkey. He's humbled, right? Nobody else knows it. Everybody else in Damascus are a bunch of Christians that think, man, he arrested my brother, my friend. He killed Stephen, had the first mark. I'm like, the guy is dangerous. Watch this. I love this, man. Now, there was a certain disciple, not preacher, not spiritual leader, not your grandmama that, that, that had faith to move mountains, just a follower of Jesus, not a minister, somebody in Damascus that loved Jesus named Ananias. And, him, and, and to him, the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, here's our response. He said, say that with me, here I am, Lord. Watch this. God tells, God tells Ananias, he said, hey, I want you to go to so-and-so's house because Saul's there. You know the risk involved in that? Think about it. Think about it. He knows, oh, God's asking me to sacrifice my life in this mug. I'm going to jail at best case scenario. He thought about the risk. You think about him? He didn't. He didn't. Here I am, Lord. He went. He had no idea that, that, that Saul, God was already humbling Saul, and he was going to change his life. And Saul is the reason that the gospel's across the world, and we're talking about it today. Paul. Because one man, and he went, and Ananias is the one that led the apostle Paul in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He is the one that laid hands on him, and Paul didn't just accept Jesus. He received the Holy Spirit, and that man changed the game for the entire world. One man, not a preacher, not a preacher, a man who says, here I am, Lord. I just live in Damascus, and that's where God chose to knock Saul off his donkey. No risk. I ain't thinking about risk. He says, here I am, Lord. I'm just, this ain't prophecy. This is common sense scripture. Principles is the gospel. And all of us need to hear it. I need to hear it. You will not see the goodness and glory of the Lord in this life the way God intends you fighting change and not taking risk. I tell everybody I love, you better, you better learn to take risk. You better learn to step out in faith. You better learn to risk the things that you know you need to risk and quit trying to go inward and hold back. You will not see his glory. You will not see. You may live a good life, but it will be surface. You will, you will live what everybody's told you you're supposed to do. You may get a lot of money, but it won't matter that much and it won't be enough. We live in a culture, it is easy. Uh, the Bible says, uh, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old is gone, the new has come. What we do, we like to cling to predictable and old. We want to stay in the things that make us comfortable because we don't want to risk uh, losing money, peace. We don't want to risk getting hurt. And I'm telling you, you, if you don't do like Ananias and when God speaks something or puts something in your heart, a desire or when your spouse or when and people you love are challenging you and pushing you out of those boundaries that you placed on yourself that God never commanded. And is not, I'm telling you, if you don't begin to push some boundaries and take some risk, if you don't begin to be generous with your life, not just your money, everything, and you don't begin to push yourself to change you're going to stay on the same pay grades you may stay in jobs four decades longer than God intended you to stay there you will stay in places and mindsets you will stay and they may not be bad but they are not for you forever you will stay in friendships you will stay in you will stay in old that God wanted you to break out of when you were 25 and you're 70 still living not to change and to fight things and you are fighting God when you're fighting change Ananias said, here I am, Lord. Come on, son. And you know what? He didn't just say it. He backed it up. It's easy to raise your hands, come to the altar. But what about when it's time to make a move? Come on. That's surrender. Tell somebody. Oh, here we go. Amen. Yeah, I almost forgot. Amen. You're missing him when you're missing opportunities. You're missing him. You will miss out on big moments, big opportunities, by being wide open doors and opportunities, by being unopened to change and to taking risk. Ananias could have went to prison or worse. Here I am, Lord. It's the right thing to do. Whether I lose my job, whether I lose, whether I lose my marriage by being honest about something that's been eating at me for 30 years and I, it may hurt. You may lose everything, but God will honor it. I know that's a little heavy. I had to lighten it up. Hurt! Here we go. Hurt. Hurt. Job. Y'all have heard the story of Job. It's awesome, right? Here's Job. Job lost everything. Come on. Don't look at the petty details of the story. I mean, like the things that we argue over, how ridiculous it is that Satan made a deal with God. That's not the point. This writer of Job, the old, probably the oldest book in the entire uh, Bible, uh, he, was, he was a genius. It was a genius. I mean, it was, 
inspired by God, so it should be. Watch this. The man loses everything. He loses 10 kids, his entire wealth, everything. He lo- his friends and wife give up on him, say, hey, man, it's time to curse God and die. And we like to say that Job was perfect. We like to say that Job, we like to say that Job was righteous, and he was. He spent most of the book. He didn't curse God, but he spent most of the book complaining. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? I'm not going to curse you like my wife and friends because you gave up on me, but why, 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 why? Chapter 42, this is, by the way, this is before God restores everything to him. And I'm going to show you something that is beautiful that I've. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know you can do anything and no one can stop you. This is where he came. This is the place his perspective came to before God did anything to restore to him what was taken. You ask, who is it that questions my wisdom with such ignorance? Mm. Woo. Come on, man. Oh, I'm all about being honest with God. But you better not stay in that bitterness for the rest of your life. Or you're going to miss out on his love and his plan and his peace. Mercy. It is I. Job says, I'm the one that was questioning you. I'm the one that spent the last 40 dadgum chapters telling you how you should handle this thing. It is I, and I was talking about things I knew nothing about. That makes me want to just bust out in a rap song right there. <laughs> things too far, things uh, far too wonderful for me. You said, listen, and I will speak. You have some questions. I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. Job's saying, it's like I feel like you got to answer my questions and all this. I had, uh, this is, if you, if you had to put, pin me up against a wall and say, what's your favorite verse in the Bible? This is it. This is it right here. I had only heard about you before. But now I have seen you with my own eyes. I take back everything I said and I sit in dust and ashes. Surrender and show my repentance. I love the translation that says, I've always heard about you with the hearing of the ear. I've been to church and heard preachers talk some awesome things that I want to believe that I want to sell my life on. I've always heard about you, but now I see you. I see your face. He didn't see him through the blessing. Come on, man. Come on. He didn't get none of this back. He saw it through the pain. He still had leprosy when he said this. He still had people trying to tell him to give up and say, I don't know what's wrong. You need to just give up. He still had 10 kids that were in the grave. He still lost everything he built wealth-wise. It wasn't the restoration that made him experience God. It was the pain, the hurt. I've always heard of you with the hearing of the ear, but now I see you. Then God restores it. But I want you to see something. I've always had trouble with this passage for years until I studied it. Because he lost 10 kids and the Bible says that God gave him 10 more kids. Well, getting 10 more kids doesn't heal the pain of losing 10 kids, you know. But when you look at it, most scholars believe, many scholars believe that God didn't give him new kids. He actually raised his kids. Is that not the gospel? Well, somebody, I hear you. I'm just glad you're here, my man. That joker's like, Zach, doggone getting busting it on the kids' ministry building. Hey, you do your thing. Silence it now because I got ADD, but do your thing. (laughs) I love you, Zach Young. Okay, Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, isn't that the gospel? To raise you to life. He wants to raise some things inside of you. He wants to restore years. He wants to restore families. He wants to redeem marriages. He wants to bring, he promises he'll bring beauty for ashes. Come on, man. But you better surrender the ashes. You better surrender the pain, the person, the past. And if you don't begin to surrender it, Job, this is before he got anything back. He's living in trauma. That's all he's doing. He's living in terror. And he says, I've always heard of you. He says, he says the Bible says he, he, he shrunk down in worship and he just said, I, I, I trust in you. You don't have to keep bleeding. You choose to keep bleeding. If you don't have to keep bleeding, you better surrender the hurt. I don't, it doesn't matter the details of your hurt, who did it, if you did it, if you didn't hit, do anything about it and everybody else got called across crossfire. Amen. You're missing opportunities and you're missing him. Sin and shame. Sin and shame. Sin and shame, your mistakes, whatever. John said, if we say we have no sin and we are fooling ourselves and the truth is not in us, But if we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins because we can trust God to do what is right. 
he will cleanse us from all the wrongs we have done. Say this with me. If we have, if we say that, let me just read it. I messed that up. If we say we have not sinned. In other words, if we don't surrender, we make God a liar and we do not accept his teaching. We don't really trust him. We don't really trust him. Surrender your mistakes. So Adam and Eve, we love to, people like to make foolishness of the principles of Adam and Eve. I'm going to tell y'all, we are Adam and Eve all day. We just got better looking leaves to cover up now. We did. We, you know, you don't, get the, you, don't, you don't learn to get a little more tricky and sneaky living several thousand years as human race. Oh, we cover up. We do. We, we love to keep secrets, to hold people in the dark that we love. We love, we love to project and pretend. We love to self-deprecate and self-sabotage. We, we do. We love to crap on everybody or stay away from everybody and live as a recluse in our house and watch church online because it's too much to come to church and risk getting hurt again. We cover up. We love to act like, we love to use our money, our resources, our good kids that we think we can at least say, well, I raised good kids. No, God raised good kids. He just used you as a vessel and you need to recognize your kids ain't good because of you. They're good because of their creator. We cover up. We just got a little better than Adam and Eve. Got a little better. And John says, uh uh-uh. You confess them. You open your heart to him. You don't hide it. You don't hide it. You need to quit running and projecting. You need to quit pretending that you don't make mistakes or make lesser mistakes than your neighbor. You need to stop. Jesus forgave you 2,000 years ago, but your problem is you won't forgive yourself. It is so sad that you can't look in the mirror sober because of your own sin and shame. You know what the gospel is? If you'll surrender it, he'll make your mistakes prosper. Come on, Come on. He'll use your mistakes to, as an example to your kids that yes, you hurt and you wasted a lot of time and you left them. I don't know what your story is, but I know that if you will begin to surrender it and quit covering it up, you don't have to bleed the rest of your life because of the mistakes you made. It doesn't matter what you've done or what you didn't do. If you're seven or 107, if you will begin to surrender your sin and shame, if you will begin to not cover up and come boldly to the throne of grace in your time of trouble, that's a promise, by the way. He will use it. You ready? Amen. Victories. I want to spend the last few minutes on the good things. Victories. Because I'm telling you, I've been able to experience a lot of good things in my life, and I've actually lived long enough that I'd appreciate them and surrender those too. Brett James, brother of Jesus, said, Every good gift and perfect gift comes from above. Not from you. Not from your hard work and grind. Not from your faithfulness, from a faithful God. These gifts come down from the Father, the creator of the heavenly lights, in whose character there is no change at all. I've had seasons now where I've had literally no options but him, and it was easy to surrender then, but then you get some growth in your life. You get some blessings. You get some answered prayers, and and it's, it's a lot harder to actually make time to seek his presence when you're winning. The mountaintops are the times that you have to be careful Because God will bless you. He will answer your prayers. And what you do on the mountaintop says, will show you your heart. What you do when, what you do with the, what you do with the respect and the money and the support that you're getting that you didn't once get. What you do with it. What do you do with it? You got a, you got a wife and kids. You got more than anyone could ever ask for in a wife, a child, a job, a career, finances. You got more than anybody could ever want. Do you appreciate it or do you take it for granted? Do you seek him or do you think you're, you've arrived? And it's not just something you say, it's a lifestyle you live. Amen. Come on now, man. Don't you forget the bottom when you get to the top. Come on. Preach it, son. Don't you forget the bottom. Don't you forget who got you to the top. Amen. Don't you think that, don't forget where you came from. Don't forget what you had to go through and what God did for you because it's easy to remember. It's easy, y'all. I've lived long enough to think, that I, to think a little bit more than I should have that I had something to do with it. I could be dead if it wasn't for God's protection. Don't you forget it. Surrender your victories. You're missing opportunities. And when you're missing opportunities, you're missing him. Surrender the victories. Surrender the victories. Don't worship what God God gave you or what you wanted to give you, man. Surrender your greatest blessings, your greatest blessings. 
Man, Abraham waited an entire century. An entire century he waited for a baby. Because back then having a son was a big deal as they were propagating and filling the earth. He waited and he got his son. He got his blessing, right? Greatest blessing. He laughed at God. God, I'm too old for this mess. God's like, no, you better go play some Marvin Gaye and and get to business because I got something for you. Anybody my age or younger is like, I don't know what he's talking about. That's all right. I I feel bad for you, but it's all right. Um, Watch this. Sometime later, this is after the blessing. Sometime later, sometime after God gave him what what he promised. And he did some stupid stuff too, by the way. You can go read about that later. That's another sermon. God tested Abraham's faith. Not for God to know, for Abraham to know. God knows knows all our hearts better than we do. God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied. Here I am. Take your son, your only son. I love this part. Yes, Isaac. Because you know, he had, he had Ishmael by a side check. He's like, no, I'm talking about the one, you, the one you really, I'm talking about the where it really hurts. The blessing, that, the, the blessing that you hold more dear because like it or not, that was, God was like, yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about the other son. I'm talking about your only son that you were waited on, that you, uh, man. We love to sacrifice the things that don't cost as much to us. Whom you love so much and go to the land of Moriah. Go sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. This ain't no hour and a half trip to Stone Mountain. This is him and his boy getting their final moments together as far as he knew. Because what, and it didn't make a lick of sense. But he had a reference that God did this for me and I can't, I can't, I can't hold back. What God, I wouldn't have if it weren't for him. Complete surrender. He's walking, talking for probably a long trip. Going, knowing that he's going to tie that man up and he's going to kill him. A burnt offering to the Lord. It may sound ridiculous, but God, he he said, do you trust me? And of course, it was a test. And we know that thousands of years later, Abraham just isn't just the father of the Jewish faith. He's the father of our faith, Paul said, because God trusted Abraham and Abraham trusted God. God said, I know your heart, big boy. I surrender. Quit trying to save your kids and surrender them. I'm learning this every day with my own. They're wonderful, but there's some things that I have to really, I'm trying, I got no filter as I get older and I'm trying to hold it in. Like they're going to learn some lessons the way you learned them because that's the only way they they can learn them and that's okay. Surrender your kids. Quit trying to smother them and save them. Surrender your spouse. Surrender your gifts and ability because God gave them to you and you need to trust him with them. Surrender them. I don't know what it is, but you need to surrender them. Everything. Everything. You're everything. Yourself. That's what I want to finish up on. Yourself. Ben, you can go ahead and come on up. Get ready. Yourself. Stay focused with me right now. I'm almost done. Jesus was sweating drops of blood. He's our example. You want to you be raised to life in your situation the way he was? He's our example. Jesus was sweating drops of blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. Such stress. Such stress. We know that's a scientific thing now. Father, if there's any other way, he was stressed out. I'm about to, and I'm about to deal with the suffering that is way more than just the execution on a cross or the beating that I'm going to take with the cat and nine tails, he said. If there's any other way, not my will, but yours be done. But I love this. He's on a cross, hung on, the, hung on the cross for hours. And he had his moments. He had his emotions where he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was honest. People like to say, well, Jesus was an atheist for a second. Yes, he was. But then he reeled back into who he was. Surrender. In Luke 23, Jesus cried out in a loud voice. Father, I give you my life. After Jesus said this, he died. He died. Complete surrender. Father, why have you forsaken me? I don't feel you right now. I don't feel you in this tragedy. I don't understand why I've lost everything and why I keep being a punching bag and why I can't catch a break. But I give you my life. I give you my life. I give you my life. See, a lot of you love Jesus, but you're not committed to him. 
Some of you, you need to commit yourself to loving him because he will, his love will change your life. You love Jesus, but you're not committed to him. Just like you love your family, but you're not nearly as committed and invested in them as you should be in this season too. You can love them and not be there for them the way you need to be. It's the same with God in any relationship. You're missing opportunities and you're missing him. You're missing his work in your life and your family. You're missing moments that God wants to invest in you. You're missing opportunities that he could show you his glory. If you would take steps forward and say, God, I I need to have this conversation. I need to do this. I need to spend my money differently. I need to invest in my family differently. I need to get away from some things that I've been carrying. I don't know what it is, but you're missing opportunities. And when you're missing opportunities, you're missing him. And you need to begin to surrender yourself.